If you expect to achieve your goals, if you expect to reach your potential, if you expect to have your dreams come true, what I'm about to explain to you is mission critical. You must become a master at visualization. Now, for those of you that are like, what the heck is she talking about? I did not sign up for some sort of meditation, woo-woo, spiritual thing here. Don't worry. This is Mel Robbins. There's always science and research involved in everything that I talk about. So visualization is a extraordinarily powerful skill. And you may have heard of the law of attraction. You may have heard of the word visualization. You may have heard of the word manifesting. I call it um, seeing signs. So I'm a master at seeing positive signs. I am a master of creating coincidences. I have the world's most incredible luck. You want to know why? Because I understand the science and the skill of visualization. I know that your brain, it is a gigantic detective machine. Your brain is a filter. Your brain is constantly looking for evidence. And that's good news. It's good news when you know how to use it to your advantage. Let me explain. So your brain has a system in it. Here's the technical term. It's called the reticular activating system. It is a network of neurons all up in here. And what is the job of the reticular activating system? It is a filter system. It's basically a system that allows certain information in your brain and it blocks out other information. And guess who programmed that filter? You did. And so did the people from your past. And so if you constantly feel like you're unlovable, guess what? Your reticular activating system is going through the day and it is going to point out every single piece of evidence that confirms that negative belief that you have. If your goal is to improve your self-worth, I want you to visualize what your life looks like and how you're going to feel about yourself when your self-worth has improved. Here's how you're going to do it. So there's two things that you have to do when it comes to visualization. You have to close your eyes. Truly, I know it sounds stupid, but I want you to close your eyes and I want you to, in your mind, have a specific picture of what it looks like in your life when your self-worth has improved. You're going to see yourself speaking up at work. You're going to see yourself talking more about your business. You're going to see yourself leaving bad relationships. You're going to see yourself defining boundaries. You're going to see yourself going to the gym. You're going to see yourself uh, taking care of yourself. And when you start to visualize the image of that, I want you to consciously, this is step two, consciously think of the positive emotions that you're going to feel. I'm going to feel happy. I'm going to feel proud. I'm going to stand taller. I'm going to be so grateful that I made this change. Marrying the, the specific picture. Oh, there I am. There I am. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at work and I'm raising my hand. Amazing. I'm sharing my idea. There I am. I'm getting a promotion. There I am asking for a raise. There I am. I've just signed up another customer to my business. There I am. I've gone back to school. I feel so good about myself. When you do that, here's what's actually happening in your brain. This is the cool science part. You are training your brain to have a totally different filter. You see, your brain, my brain, it doesn't know the difference between something that actually happened to you, like the F you got in your test in 10th grade, and the things you imagine that are happening to you. Let me say that again. Your brain doesn't know the difference between the bad things that actually happened to you, the real memories that you have, and an imagined memory that you're creating. Your brain will experience you visualizing 
going to the gym, you visualizing how happy you feel when you do, you visualizing asking for that raise and getting it and how proud you're gonna feel. Your brain, when you visualize in the way that I'm teaching you to, it, it encodes it as a real memory. And that's important because when you encode it as a real memory, it changes the filter system, that reticular activating system. And here's what we know based on research. The more you visualize things, number one, the greater your confidence is gonna be, the greater security you're gonna have about it. And here's the really cool thing. The more you do this with your goals, you wake up every day and you just visualize, for, it takes 30 freaking seconds for crying out loud. You visualize having a great day at school. You visualize curing your panic and how proud you're going to be. What studies suggest and have proven is that simply visualizing yourself doing things actually develops the skill and helps you improve the skills just as if you were actually doing it. The problem with passion is that you and I have bought into this massive fantasy world where we think that passion is a person or a place or a thing that somehow like a needle in a stay hat in a, a needle in a haystack that you are somehow just going to stumble into the thing and you're going to find that one person or you're going to find that one thing that you're meant to do or you're going to find that career and honestly we got to change the way that you think about passion and purpose before you will actually be able to bring it into your life. Because the truth is, passion isn't in a person, it isn't in a place, and it isn't in a thing. It's something inside of you. And when you flip the definition of what passion is, and when you actually understand what you're looking for, when you say, I wanna discover my passion, then you'll be able to create more of it in your life. I started thinking about luck because there are, for a long time in my life, I started to think that luck was for other people, that luck was just one of those things that if you were lucky enough to be born with luck, you won the lottery, you got the job you wanted, your family got along. And the truth is there's a tremendous amount of science behind luck, that luck is something that you can make for yourself, that you can become luckier based on the things that you do and the things that you think about. And one of the things about lucky people is a lot of lucky people make their luck because they have trained themselves to think optimistically. And one small trick that you can use in your life that is free, you can do it today, is when you go to bed tonight, before you go to sleep, I want you to write down one thing that happened today that was good. That's it. Every night before you go to bed, I want you to write down one thing that happened today that's good. In fact, let's do it right now. In the comments, go to the comments and tell me one thing that has happened today that you can think of that's good. Just one thing. Maybe you got up on time. Maybe you didn't have traffic today uh, on the way to work. Maybe uh, you haven't fought with your kids this morning. Maybe you got to the gym. Maybe you woke up and for the first hour of the day, you didn't make yourself wrong. All of those things, while they're really little, don't dismiss them because those are things that are good. And the reason why I want you to start a practice where every night before you go to bed, or if you don't want to do it at night, do it in the morning, every night before you go to bed, write down one thing that happened today that was good. The reason why you're doing this is you are training yourself to start to spot the good. Believe it or not, training yourself to start to look for the good in your life fundamentally trains your mind away from looking at the negative so that you start seeing this thing that's positive about your life versus that thing that's negative about your life. You're never, ever, ever, ever going to feel like doing the things you need to do in order to have what you want. You're always going to need to push yourself. You're always going to need to parent yourself. So what is the net advice on this? What, what is the bottom line? The bottom line is, no one's coming. No one. No one's coming to push you. No one's coming to tell you to turn the TV off. No one's coming to tell you to get out the door and exercise. Nobody's coming to tell you to apply for that job that you've always dreamt about. Nobody's coming to write the business plan for you. It's up to you. 
And because you're only ever gonna do the things that you feel like doing right now or that feel good right now, unless you understand that you've got to parent yourself, you gotta push yourself, you're not gonna make your dreams come true. You're just not. We're not wired that way. You weren't born that way, you weren't that way when you were growing up, and you're certainly not that way as an adult. And there's a tremendous amount of liberation that comes when you accept the fact that you're always going to need to give yourself a push. The truth is, if you want control in your life, if you wanna make things happen, you have to be able to expect that you're gonna get a no and do it anyway. So what do I mean when I say, if you want control, expect a no? Well, there's a couple things that I mean by it. Number one, if you're somebody that gets paralyzed because you want things to be perfect, perfectionism is a way that most of us try to handle or mitigate or uh, make sure that we don't hear no. We assume that if we're perfect, everything's gonna go okay. And so we spend all of our energy thinking about our dating profile or thinking about the business plan or thinking about how to make things perfect and the reason why we do that is we're terrified to hear no. We're terrified to put something out there that's not perfect because if it's not perfect, you might get a no. Um, one of the better ways to handle this is to actually expect a no. You know, I saw the most incredible quote by our friend Festina over in Australia. She's a very famous DJ and friend of ours from Australia. And she put out the most amazing quote and I'm gonna get it totally wrong. Um, but it's something like this. You have to be yourself because how else are the people who are looking for you gonna find you? And I think particularly when it comes to dating, what we tend to do is we are so afraid of being rejected by anybody out there that we try to be somebody that we're not. That we put out a fake improved or what we think is improved version of ourselves in order to not hear no. And most of us pretend to be somebody that we're not when we fear rejection, when we believe that how we are, who we are, isn't good enough. And so that's why it's so important for you to understand that you have to be willing to hear a no. You have to be willing to hear a no from the wrong people so that the people that are looking for you can find you, so that the people who want to be part of your business can be part of your business. If you're putting a fake person out there or a pretend perfect person out there because you think that's going to that's gonna save you from rejection, you're actually screwing yourself over. You're not a procrastinator. You have a habit of procrastinating. Big difference. Because if it's a habit, I can teach you to use science to break it. You see, all habits have three parts. There's a trigger, and in the case of procrastination, the triggers always stress. Then there's a pattern you repeat, and in the case of procrastination, it is to avoid doing something. And then there's a reward. You get a little stress relief. The only way to break a habit, you guys, is not to deal with the triggers. You're never gonna get rid of the stress in your life, but you can 100% change your pattern of avoiding work. So next time that you're in a situation where you feel yourself hesitate, you spent way too much time checking out the highlights from last night's scores, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go, oh, I must be stressed out about something. Acknowledge the stress. Then go five, four, three, two, one. I want you to count to yourself because I want you to interrupt the habit that's stored here and I want you to awaken your prefrontal cortex. Then I want you to just work, just for five minutes. The reason why I want you to only work for five minutes is because your problem isn't working. It's the habit of avoiding. I just need you to start. And here's the other cool thing. We know based on research that if we can get you to start, 80% of you are going to keep going. Do it anyway is a mindset trick that you can use when you start to feel excuses rolling up. It works a lot like the five second rule. So you have said to yourself, okay, I'm gonna talk to my boss today about that thing that I've been avoiding talking to them about. Or maybe you've said something like, I'm gonna go to the gym today or tomorrow or whatever. And then the moment comes where you've gotta have that conversation. Or the moment comes where it's time to pack up your bag and leave your desk and go to the gym. And what always happens? You don't feel like it. 
I bet there are plenty of you watching that have made a commitment that, nah, I'm not gonna have a drink tonight. And then guess what happens when you get home? You don't feel like not drinking. You feel like having a drink. And so here's what do it anyway has done for me. The idea that I just do it anyway has pushed me to realize and to recognize that there are a lot of moments where there are things in my life that I really want to do, I need to do, I should do, but when the moment comes, I don't feel like it. And so I pull out this idea of, you know what, I'm just gonna do it anyway. It's raining outside, I said I would go for a, a short run, I don't feel like it, I'm gonna do it anyway. It's six o'clock in the morning, I'm tired, it's cold. I laid out my yoga clothes, but now I don't feel like it. What do I do? I do it anyway. When you start to say to yourself, I'm gonna do it anyway, what happens is something really cool. You acknowledge that there are feelings that you have that are trying to swoop in and hijack you. You acknowledge them and you basically say, guess what? I'm gonna do it anyway. The one person that is diminishing your ability to make these dreams a reality is you. Because when you state your dream, this is what happens. You state it and then all of a sudden you're present to how far away you are from it. And when you see the distance between where you are and where you want to go, the direction that your dream requires you to walk in, you're gonna get present to the gap. And that scares us. That's where fear comes into play and you start to think of all the reasons why you don't deserve it. You start to think of all the reasons why you can't do it. All that you have to do in order to start to pursue your dreams is take small actions every day that align your life in that direction. So what does that mean if you wanna play guitar professionally? It means that you start playing guitar more. It means that you sign up for open mic nights. It means that you go back to class if, if that's something that interests you. You see, your dreams will happen either because of you or in spite of you. They don't happen because of other people. They happen because of you and what you do. The second you have the bravery to state that dream, now are you going to create it or are you going to diminish it in your mind? Here's your new definition of passion. Passion is simply energy. That's all that it is, okay? Passion is what you feel when you are energized and excited about what you're doing, okay? I want you to think about that for a minute. I want you to think about a moment in time when you felt incredibly passionate about something, okay? And why don't you in the comments tell me where are you watching from and tell me about a moment in time when you felt incredibly passionate about what you were doing, about where you were, about the people that you are with, describe that moment for me. Because when you start to really investigate passion as energy, this is what you're going to discover. Those moments when you are super passionate, like I'm sure my kids would write down when they're doing community theater with all their friends. I would write down whenever I'm doing any kind of creative project with my team, I'm incredibly energized. Whenever I'm doing group exercise stuff, climbing a mountain, uh, doing a 5K race, doing some sort of walk-a-thon. I'm incredibly energized by that. Whenever I'm um, doing some sort of creative project, incredibly energized by that. Whenever I'm working with our video team, incredibly energized by that. Whenever I am coaching someone or giving advice, I am incredibly energized by that. And so what I want you to understand is that if you look back on your life, you have had moments where you have felt passion. Now, I'm being very deliberate in how I'm talking this morning on Coffee Talk because passion is a huge topic for so many of you. And you've been so focused on trying to figure out what job is gonna make me uh, passionate? What job is my passion? What is my purpose on the earth? I'm gonna tell you what your purpose on earth is right now. Your purpose on earth is to figure out how to align your life so that you feel more energized and excited by it. That's it. And it begins with you following the energy and following your natural enthusiasm. You're not gonna think your way to passion. You can't think your way to finding something that you feel in your heart. It doesn't work that way. 
You got to feel your way into it. It's inside of you. Do you understand? There's no passion out there somewhere. The passion is in here. And so what you have to do first is you've got to stop thinking that you're going to find it somewhere. And you've got to realize that passion is about unlocking something that's already in you. You born, you're home, and then we go to kindergarten, and then you go to first grade, and then you go to second grade, and then you go to third grade, and then you go to fourth grade, and then you go to fifth grade, and then you go to middle school, and then you go to high school, and then there's pressure to go to college or to a tech school or to do something else, and then you get your job, and then you're in your job, and then you meet somebody, and then you get married, and then you're supposed to buy the house, and then you're supposed to have the kids, and maybe you get the dog before the kids or after the kids, but then you have a second kid, and then you have the .5 kid, because most of us do .5 kids, and then we get, and then we get the the home equity line and then we put the kitchen addition on and then we I mean it's like our entire lives are set out in this linear progression as people chase the dream the next yeah and particularly for those of us who are triggered by the fear of losing control it's only natural to anchor your feeling of being in control to chasing the next thing. Mm -hmm. And so not only are we all socialized to believe that we're supposed to climb this ladder, we're supposed to do things in a linear progression, we're supposed to um, get to the next thing. Yeah. We've also been marketed to by society that we'll be happier if we have a new car. We'll be happier if we have a better dishwasher. We'll be happier if we have the skin lotion that's got the almond scent. And we're also psychologically anchoring our sense of control and our sense of happiness on achieving those things. And what you're experiencing is no different than what millions and millions and millions of us experience. And that's that emptiness that you feel when you buy the lotion that smells like almond butter mm -hmm. and it doesn't make you happy or you get the promotion and you have an extra hundred bucks in your paycheck after taxes and it means you can buy the $14 Chardonnay not the $10 Chardonnay and it doesn't make you happy and the reason why is the I'll be happy when life, the chase the carrot life, the get to the next thing life, that form of happiness requires you to be driving, let's use the car analogy again, to be going 60 miles an hour at all times. And happiness is achieved through a different formula. It happens when you're sitting at the light and you're idle. When you're in the moment doing things that make you happy and that's being with people that you care about it's engaging in experiences that make you happy and it's working on things that are important to you if you want some more affirmations with ed mylett check out the video right there next to me i think you'll enjoy it continue to believe and i'll see you there so there's this governor on our lives and it is a governor and it's a it's your identity it's this internal it's what you think you're worth it's what you think you deserve. 